Welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. I am Runke Kolawali. President Muhammadu Buhari will on Friday depart for Addis Ababa, Ethiopia to participate in the 30th ordinary session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the African Union, AU. A statement released by the Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Femi Additional, indicates that the President's engagement at the summit will be his statement under the historic theme winning the fight against corruption, a sustainable path to Africa's transformation. This is the first of such a theme in AU 54-year history. The statement notes that this engagement is in acceptance to the African leaders' endorsement of President Buhari at the 29th session to champion the fight against corruption in recognition of his commitment and anti-graft drive at domestic level. President Buhari will also hold bilateral meetings with other leaders. Mr. Additional states that African leaders and delegates will also consider other issues such as peace, security, transnational terrorism, climate change, gender development, among others at the meeting. Some top government functionaries, including ministers of foreign affairs, attorney general and EFCC boards are scheduled to be in the president's delegation to the summit. And now to the National Assembly, where the Senate has considered the report of the Committee on Trade and Investment on the Oil and Gas Export Free Zone Act of 2011 Amendment Bill 2018. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegnoloye reports that following deliberations, the matter was referred to the committee for further legislative action. Senate do consider the report of a bill on oil and gas as well as free trade zone authority act provide for the designation and establishment of oil and gas free trade zone in Nigeria. Amendment Bill 2018. Chairman of the Committee on Petroleum Downstream, Senator Kabiru Marafa, gave an update on resolutions taken after meeting with top management of the NNPC. To be clear to the NNPC that they must, they must go and make sure that these queues that exist disappear. The Senate also paid tribute to former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, Dahiru Mustafa, who died on Monday, aged 75. In, 19, in, two, in 2011, he was appointed the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. I feel pained that at a time when this country requires the services, expertise, experience, and knowledge of a jurist such as late, the late Chief Justice of this country, Mustafa. God has chosen in his wisdom to call him home. Nairo Mustafa was a legal luminary by excellence who served this country with merit. He inspired confidence among the younger lawyers. A minute silence was held in his honor. And still with the National Assembly, the House of Representatives has passed two bills for third reading. They are Petroleum Industry Governance Bill and the bill seeking to extend the implementation of the 2017 budget of the Federal Capital Territory to 31st of March 2018. A bill for an act to provide for the governance 
an institutional framework for the petroleum industry and for related matters, House Bill 477-878 and 10-53, be read the third time. I so move. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. The ayes have it. Clerks invited to read long title of the bill. A bill for an act to provide for the governance and institutional framework for the petroleum industry and for related matters. Third reading. In the meantime, the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA, is seeking for more budgetary provisions to enable it key into the global trend in digital broadcasting. Director General Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, while defending NTA's budget before the Senate Committee on Information, says more funds are needed to beat the digital switch over. National Assembly correspondent Rabi Musa has details. In keeping with the procedure, NTA had to explain the performance of its 2017 budget before the Senate Committee on Information and then defend the 2018 budget estimate of the authority. The Director General, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, says 98% of the 6.8 billion Naira personnel cost was released, while just about 55% of the overhead cost in 2017 was released. The authority, he said, only accessed 300 million Naira out of the more than 644 million approved for the capital projects. On the 2018 budget, the NTA DG informed the Senate Committee on Information that an estimate of more than 6.9 billion Naira is made for the authority, amount, he says, is inadequate. The digitization process, which has become a global obligation you know, since 2017, you know, we wish to appeal for the release of more funds so that we can meet our obligation in this respect. And uh, more funds, of course, are needed for us to upgrade and replace our obsolete equipment uh, to ensure effective coverage of government activities to promote national consciousness and uh, also for us to um, take our rightful place as a public broadcaster. Members of the Senate Committee on Information, while acknowledging the observation of the NTA, suggested that the authority should strive to generate more revenue to bridge the gap. So you have to be practiced by uh, going through the procurement process, knowing that the Act will give you about three months span before you can complete the process. As a government, we have not given a enabling environment right enough for NTA to make the kind of returns that is desirous of the Nigerian people. You have the talent, you have the equipment. Really, if you want a quarter of a billion for equipment, then you should be generating five billion in revenue just from that department. And what I'm trying to say is the programs department. Nine federal government-owned media agencies under the Ministry of Information are also defending their 2017 budget performance and 2018 estimates. Rabbi Musa, NTA News. We now join Marco Simon Macham, who is already in Ethiopia for the 30th Odari session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the African Union to give us a rundown of the summit's agenda. Thank you very much, studio. Yes, indeed, the 30th Ordinary uh, Assembly of the African Heads of State and Government is underway here in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Now, the theme for this year's summit is winning the fight against corruption in Africa, a sustainable path to development of the continent. Now, this theme was chosen uh, last year when President Muhammad Buhari and Nigeria was endorsed to champion this theme. And so the president is due to arrive here in uh, Addis Ababa to address the summit uh, when the heads of states uh, all converge. Now, the theme was chosen for many reasons. Part of which is the fact that corruption has been acknowledged as one of the setbacks of the African continent. And this time around, the African heads of states are beginning to think of how they can collectively uh, come together to fight this scourge. It is uh, known that Africa 
is one of the resource uh, rich continents but yet very poor because most of the resources are stolen and taken elsewhere and so they'll be talking about how to stop this stealing and indeed how to recover stolen assets that are stashed away in most of the developed world President Muhammad Buhari is expected to share the experiences of Nigeria and indeed he will also share the frustrations uh, Nigeria is facing in fighting corruption. He has uh, determined to ensure that corruption is dealt with in Nigeria and so he will be talking with his colleagues to ensure that they have a collective voice to fighting corruption. Apart from that, there will be other issues they will be dealing with including the reform of the African Union. This has been ongoing and so some of the issues that have been outstanding will be discussed uh, here. There will be also issue of um, uh, migration illegal migration of uh, particularly Africans to uh, other parts of the world and indeed the recent situation in Libya will all be discussed. The issue of climate change will also be on, on the table. Now there is also the issue of trade, facilitating trade and movement of goods and people across the African continent within the African continent will also be uh, highlighted because the level of trade between African countries is very low and they are determined to ensure that this is boosted uh, going forth. Now on the sidelines there will be other uh, discussions about hunger, about um, malaria and indeed the African Development Bank is due to present its 2018 economic outlook for the continent. And well, thank you, Makut. We'll be waiting for more details on the meeting going on in Ethiopia. And moving to health matters now, Nigeria recalls milestone in the health sector with a drop in the maternal mortality rate. This was the message of Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewoli, to an advocacy and sensitization seminar on maternal and prenatal death surveillance and response for state officials. Represented by the Director of Family Health in the Ministry, Dr. Adebiyupi Adebiji, the minister said the current statistics put neonatal mortality rate at 37 per 1,000 live births, which is a great improvement. Development partners, donors, and the leadership of the states to continue to support the Federal Ministry of Health towards the improvement of the maternal neonatal and under five health indices in Nigeria. And the maternal health, uh, capacity building, uh, training of doctors and paramedical staff um, for the state uh, hospitals to get involved in the new, newly introduced uh, data collection system electronically. The workshop, which is organized by the Minister of Health in collaboration with Rotary International, is aimed at ensuring quality health care, especially for mothers. And to other issues now, experts say Nigeria needs to go back to the basics and reintegrate our curriculum to be globally competitive. This guest on Good Morning Nigeria say is the only way to bridge the disconnect where the present curricula is only preparing people for jobs of the past. Lydia Samson has that report. The guests say though Nigeria continues to be an investment bride for the world, the country can only take a rightful place if ICT is taken seriously. To this end, they advise Nigerians, especially youths, to acquire skills that will be useful to companies on the global scene. You also recall that um, in the engineering, for instance, if you go to uh, some of these old universities, they still teach them not engaged with the private sector. How do we coordinate the private sector? How do we coordinate the industries to engage themselves with making input into the curriculum education, higher education? That appears not to be the case. They buy apps of billion dollars. Millions of dollars. This is serious revenue generation. This is as equal as oil and gas for this country. Nigeria has a very um, brilliant re uh, reputation uh, from an international perspective. Um, we students that migrate from the United States to come study abroad um, were often at the top of our class. The guest said though Nigeria is still lagging behind in the positive views of ICT and the internet, the country's population is an advantage that can help change the narrative. Video games require you to think on your feet. They require you to process large amounts of information. 
of information and data. They require you to, to actually solve complex puzzles. And as silly as that sounds, quite a few managers, quite a few prominent um, directors and program managers and, and, and CEOs of new companies, they started off playing video games as kids. The budget on education for Malaysia, for example, um, I was told is um, three times that of Nigeria. And meanwhile, in terms of population, Malaysia is just, um, um, they're very, in terms of numbers, they're about, uh, maybe we are, we are four times their number. Whereas the amount they are spending on education yearly, it's um, three times that of Nigeria. They suggested the domestication of problem-solving computer games as a starting point for children to imbibe processing of large information, critical thinking, and solving problems. They also called for more budget reallocation to the education sector. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Elsewhere, the House Committee on FCT Area Cancers and Auxiliary Matters says it will continue to ensure that ongoing infrastructural projects of which funds were appropriated by the National Assembly are completed and utilized. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nanim reports that the committee inspected some of the put in place Just press the administration. We should. Then the next. First phase, we are uh, looking at two roads: the Abekuta Songwater Dual Carriageway, and then the J4 or Shore Iwokmi Road. Uh, here, we in this first phase, we are taking care of this stretch. Engineer Mazoya, however, attributed improper attitude of Nigerians towards road usage, such as indiscriminate cutting of roads, burning of tires. There's other challenges apart from funding. The road has been so bad for quite 
sometimes now. And uh, your presence here shows that uh, the government is yielding to the demands of the people. And we believe that if you continue to do this, then the road will be more motorable than this. Coming to the aid of, his, of the masses to repair this road, uh, I think it's a thing of joy to Federal government receives accolades on economic diversification. Adimola in Lagos has more details and other stories from that zone. Hello, Adimola. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Ronke. It's good to have you join us in Lagos. The federal government's intense drive at repositioning the economy on the path of growth had largely contributed to industrialization and economic diversification in the country. President Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Babatunde Rushewe, stated this while extraying the state of the economy at a media party in Lagos. Aboladi Salami completes the report. The nation's economy for some time now has maintained a relatively stable performance, thereby encouraging foreign investors' participation. Encouraged by this development, stakeholders say, for government to sustain the all-inclusive economic growth, the issues of high interest rates and inflation must be critically addressed. Improvement in crude oil price and oil output, better liquidity in forex markets are major drivers of this positive outlook. Businesses witnessed improved liquidity and stability in forex market. Confidence is gradually returning to the market, and we hope that this would be sustained in 2018. Towards engendering a robust and viable market for small and medium-scale enterprises to thrive, they added that the need to sustain liquidity and stability of forex is paramount. Inflation has maintained a downward trend. trend. Evidently, the improved economic performance played a significant role in the boom of capital market. These were driven by the implementation of policy reforms, such as the creation of investors and exports window and increased dollar liquidity. The Chamber expressed optimism that with the government's economic recovery and growth plan policy and its fight against corruption, the nation's economy will witness for the surge in 2018. In Lagos, Aboladi Salami, NTA News. The first month of, Janu of the year, January, has been described as the longest month of the year because of various challenges associated with it, especially in the area of finance. A cross-session of Lagos residents revealed how they are coping with the economic reality in the month of January. Some respondents who spoke with NTA News say the financial difficulty experienced in the month of January is usually as a result of overspending habits of most Nigerians during the Utah season of the previous year. They say the situation is toughest for fixed income earners who look forward to the month coming to an end. The way I might be feeling it, someone else is not feeling it like that. I mean, it's relative. Those who are workers who depend on salary i think they are still getting their salary every month during the festive period we spend a lot on entertainment going to places and all that and before i say jack robinson there's no more money so we now expect money to come either from salary or business and all that and becomes the longest month a lot of expenses have gone into the christmas celebrations then come january I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a parent, but I know of parents who have to pay, that to do with school, school fees and everything, coupled with the hardship of uh, fuel scarcity. So all those challenges have not made it easy. They have to minimize their spending during the SMAS, during the festive periods, because you will not go and borrow and not expect the month, next month that you're supposed to pay back, and you expect it to be okay for you. Respondent insists that the only solution to overcoming financial crunch associated with the start of a new year is prudent spending and management of resources. Well, those are some of the stories we have on our table 
in Lagos is back to you, Ronke, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Adumala. You're watching Nationwide. Time for me now to take a breather. We'll be back with more reports. Join us again. Speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We abandoned over The General Hospital Aba, which was taken over by the previous state government as temporary site for Abia State University Teaching Hospital Aba, we soon commence full health care services, renovations and cleaning of the premises, wards and various units are in progress as some doctors and nurses are ready to resume their duties. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. John Ahukana, warned those who have acquired parts of the hospital illegally as residents immediately. This hadn't been in use. It had looked as if it was abandoned. Some squatters, you know, now decided to go uh, to occupy the place. But now that the government has risen up to its responsibilities and we now want them to go get the hell out of the place so that we can use it for what, what it's supposed to be. We're going to deliver efficient and quality service. This is um, a project that um, the indigents of ABBA have been expecting. I'm encouraging the masses, Abians, to come in their numbers. We are ready to set this place. Again. The General Hospital Abba will officially resume medical services on the 8th of February 2018. In Abba, Eugenia and BBC, NTA News. Enugu State Governor Ifanyi Ugwanyi has flagged up a 10 kilometer road leading to Godfrey Okoye University permanent site in Enugu. Chimobi, Water Naji, as well as there. The MNA Adoration Nkubo Ugwami Road leading to the permanent site of the Godfrey Okoye University has been a hard nut to be cracked for the community and university staff and students. Several efforts made by the university management in the past eight years to attract government attention for the construction of the road proved abortive as successive governments abandoned the road. Governor Ifanyi Ugwani, while flagging off the 10-kilometer road construction project, said this is part of his administration's agenda to open up rural communities and ensure an all-round development of the state. The construction of the road will be done by direct level through the works department of the university, a partnership with some private companies in the country. The university's vice chancellor, very reverend professor Christian Anieke, said the project will further boost rural urban development in the area. Others who spoke at the occasion said the Uguamu Nkobonike communities are predominantly farmers and thanked the governor for opening up the community through the project. Earliest completion time for this project will be latest by the end of June. So thank God, I'm over happy that in my resume on Azenigwe, this road was not through. There were traditional music and dances by members of the communities to express their joy. Delegation from the People's Democratic Party has condoled with the family of the pioneer chairman of the party and former vice president of Nigeria, Dr. Alex Ekweme, over the death of the elder statesman, leader of the delegation and national chairman of the party, Uche Sekandas, described his, the death as a big loss to the party and to the country. Ijoma Ugweke tells us more. The national chairman who eulogized Dr. Alex Ekweme as a leader who was fearless and highly respected by all and sundry said it is a solemn moment for the members of the party because the party has lost a leader who was bestowed with the wisdom to pilot the affairs of the party. His hard work, he said, made the party to stand tall for 16 years. How can we describe this man? who has shown the light to the young and to the old, that politics can be played without bitterness. 
chairman board of trustees Wally Jubril, while condoling the family, said that let Equeme represent peace and unity of the country, adding that the Igbos have lost a man of honor and integrity. He was a true Nigeria who knows that they did not see any bounds of his identity or religious differences at all. In her response, the daughter of the deceased thanked the delegates for the honor, describing the death of his father as God's will. I'm taking very good advantage of this day to say it would be wonderful if PDP could instill this and for all people and for the party to be supreme. The visit Provision of Um. In a framework for monitoring and evaluation of its coordinative role in the provision of humanitarian needs to the people of the region. Joseph Orok. NTN News. We now go to Bauchi State, where youth corps members have been challenged to take advantage of the NYSE Entrepreneurship Program in order to be self-reliant. Director General of the scheme, Brigadier General Suleiman Kazori, made the challenge in Bauchi when he visited the joint 2017 Batch B Stream 2 corps members at the Wailu Orientation Camp. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed has that report. The 2017 Batch B Stream 2 Joint Orientation Calls for core members posted to Adamawa, Bauchi and Yobe states currently holding in Bauchi have 134 core members posted to serve in Bauchi, 610 to Adamawa and 286 to Yobe states. During a working visit to Wailo Orientation Camp Bauchi, the Director General of the National Youth Service Corps Scheme, Brigadier General Suleiman Kazori, noted that the scheme have put in place all measures that will enhance the welfare of core members during their service year. According to him, with the establishment of NYC Skills Acquisition Centers in the geopolitical zones of Nigeria, the core members are expected to leverage on the opportunities. There is no white collar job now. So the only solution, the only way out is the, to be self-reliant. So that's the reason why we are trying to establish the uh, skill acquisition center in all the six geopolitical zones. The one for the northeast is situated in Gombe here. I'm sure very soon it will be commissioned by the Mr. President by the grace of God. Joint orientation camp is expected to close on the 5th of February 2018. In Bauchi, Mohammed, Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. In 
other news, the Ministry of Defense has proposed a total sum of 28 billion naira for its services in 2018. Minister of Defense Mansour Danali says the proposal was based on the 2017 to 2020 economic recovery and growth plan. This was during a budget defense session before the House Committee on Defense. National Assembly correspondent Ifanye Zumba reports on this and other matters. The Minister of Defense, Monsieur Dan Ali, added that the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan has three main objectives, which are to restore and sustain growth of the economy, building a globally competitive economy, and investing on the people. The Ministry is totally committed to realizing the core mandate provided for giving to it adequate security for peaceful, unified Nigeria European embassies. I see te telephone charges. Um, I see consultancy services. A certain amount is, is attached to it. Yeah. Beneath it, you see financial consulting, another amount. Chief of Defence Staff, Major Gabriel Olonisheku, was also before the committee to present their 2018 budget estimate. He said... And release is in relationship. You make sure you have the capacity to go there. In their separate responses, stakeholders at the meeting unanimously agreed that it is important the security of this nation is beefed up to stop the killings of innocent Nigerians. It's not the full army that have been residents with us, but they are strangers that are coming from neighboring states. So that is the way forward to produce a grazing reserve. And the one that we have, we want that to be effective. The participants urged government to find a lasting solution to the clashes in the interest of the nation. In Ibadan, Rafia Animashan Badmos, NTA News. Motorists and users of petrol are experiencing resurgence of acute scarcity of petrol in Ibadan as long queues of vehicles return to fuel stations. Gokialomogi has the situation reports. 
Recently, the fuel situation seemed to be easing up until a few days ago when long queues reappeared at various filling stations. Many fuel stations not selling claim up to have supply, while the few ones with the commodity are selling at expensive rates. The independent marketers sell the commodity above the official pump price as the least cost per litre is 200 naira. Frustration seems to have set in as many vehicles were abandoned at filling stations even when they are not selling. I left my office to come and queue once I know that they are selling here. And I've been off work for two hours, so I don't know what next. I don't know where else we are going after this. We are just hoping that it can get a little better because it's it's affecting a lot of things. Man hours are being wasted. Here to now, we haven't seen anything. So we are begging them Anywho, to just put more effort. Black marketers of fuel have seized the opportunity of the scarcity to do business in parts of the metropolis. People look on to government to resolve the lingering problems of fuel scarcity sooner rather than later. In Ibadan, Goki Alamagi, NTA News. And that does it from Ibadan. It's back to Ron Ken Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Kemi. We now take another break. We have more news when we return. TA TV College Jaws, an affiliate of the prestigious Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, is organizing a one month short course on online news reporting. The course is scheduled for 5th February to 16th March 2018 at the NTA TV College premises, Refueled Jaws. The course for workshop is 100,000 naira per participant, accommodation inclusive. This course will be targeting professional journalists and those wishing to pursue courses in this field. The course will be teaching participants the act of using mobile phone cameras and digital cameras to generate reports and how these news stories, photos and videos can be produced or even published straight from the field, making the news production process. On Alwa Police Post in Shiroro local government area of Niger State. Police Post, Alawa Police Post, uh, under uh, Shiroro local government area was raised down by these bandits that have been arrested now. Uh, these bandits have been in operation for quite some time now, and uh, two policemen were killed in this incident. It is equally of note uh, that uh, they have admitted uh, to the killing of 19 people at different levels. Uh, they killed seven, they kidnapped seven people from a mosque, uh, took them to undisclosed location and killed all of them. They subsequently equally kidnapped additional four people, killed them on a different date, equally kidnapped two, four, and two other persons, making a total number of 19 people that have been kidnapped and killed by this uh, uh, bandit. The first public relations officer affirmed the renewed commitment of the police to rid the country of all forms of crimes in the country. Commissioner of Police Plateau State Command on Peace Treaty between farmers and headsmen. This and more as we join Femi Street in our Joss Network Center for details. Hello and welcome to Joss. The Plateau State's Commissioner of Police, Undi Adi, has appealed to farmers and headsmen in the state to partner and live in peace with one another for the good of all. The commissioner made the appeal during a parley with key players from four local government areas of the state. Ben Mitu was there. In recent weeks, one issue that has dominated public discourse is the incessant conflict between farmers and headsmen. This meeting is not an exception as it brought together key players in the sector from Barakin Ladi, Riom, just south and Basa local government areas to rob mines as well as proffer solutions to the problem. We all know human life is invaluable. You can't price a place a price. togetherness. in the four
is very venue of the The investigation. Participants applauded the Commission for organizing the workshop as they are better informed and educated. The Public Complaints Commission is an act of Parliament which exists principally to promote individual and organizations' rights. In JOS, Ruth Ario Samuel, NTA News. To tackle the challenges of moral decadence and decline in educational standards in Nigerian society, are being charged to identify efforts at inculcating the right knowledge and morals in the younger generation. This was the message at the 6th anniversary Walimat of Sheikh Ibrahim Muzdad Memorial Foundation, also known as the College of Quranic Recitation in Jos. Ibrahim Yahaya Idris tells us more. Several speakers at the event who based their messages on the theme, the many benefits of living entirely in the light of the glorious Quran, emphasized on the need for the Muslim Ummah to consider the glorious Quran an unrivaled guiding light for mankind. This, they said, is important for the survival and upbringing of children. Allah created the world. Allah created the life. A media guru, al Haji Dasuki Nakandi, described as worrisome the way and manner the youth roam the streets in bad companies and engage in various illicit activities. The Parent Teachers Association of the school, chaired by al Haji Baba Alin Abba, noted that such gathering fulfills the actual obligation of prioritizing the teachings of the glorious Quran. He thus called on parents, teachers, students, and also governments at all levels to prioritize the discipline of children from infants to adults to achieve a more decent society. Malam Nazifi Ahmad lauded the initiative and called on the graduates to uphold the lessons acquired as he assured of more government support for such purposes. The graduates could not hide their joy for achieving such feats. I would like to advise my younger ones to keep going, to keep reading. In Jaws, Ibrahim Yahya Idris, NTA News. And that does it from Joss. Ronke, it's back to you for more news. Thank you, Femi Chait. And Sports Update is next. Nigerian club sides winning the African Hockey Cup for club champions in Accra, Ghana, is reducing each day with few days remaining to end the tournament. Nigeria's strongest side, Nigel Flickers in white, lost 2-1 to IGP Police in the Nigerian Derby, while defending champions Eastern Company lost 2-4 to El Shalkia in an Egyptian Derby. In the women's category, Kada Queens beat Stratmo 4-1. The walls of Yoba Desert Queens continued with another loss, 0-4 to Ghana, please. Meanwhile, South Africa, Nigeria's opponents in the last... Hear the call, call of change, stand up, Nigeria, change is here.